In this video I'll show you step by step how I shot an epic coffee b-roll sequence just using my iPhone. I will walk you through the entire process and share with you a few different insights so that you can make these kinds of videos for yourself. Make sure to stick till the end. All right, welcome back to the channel. In case you're new here, welcome. My name is Julian. I'm the creator of Smartphone Filmmaking Pro. And on this channel, we talk about filmmaking just using a smartphone. In case you would like to learn a few different tricks or the newest gear review, then make sure to hit that subscribe button. But now I'll walk you through the entire process on how I made this video. So when it comes to shooting these epic b-roll sequences, I always like to shoot them at high frame rates. So what does that mean? I like to shoot these videos at 120 and if possible even at 240 frames per second. I will be using the iPhone 14 Pro, but this will basically work with any phone that can shoot at higher frame rates than 60 frames per second. Something that's also very important when you're shooting at these high frame rates is that you have lots of light because if you have a high frame rate, you need to have a high shutter speed and that means that you have to have lots of light. So my light of choice will be the one that I'm using right now also to light myself. This is the Godox SL60 using a softbox. This light in my opinion is the best light when it comes to bang for buck what you get for your money. You can get this for under 200 bucks and you can basically use this for absolutely everything. So when it comes to shooting these epic b-roll sequences, one of the most important things is proper planning. The better you plan these videos, the easier time you will have when you're actually shooting the thing and overall the better the final video will be. So I have made a shot list and we know pretty good like what the final video should look like. And now basically all that we need to do, like all that we need to do is we need to just you know, get the shots in the way that we want it. And that's also something that is important with these kinds of videos is you need to be patient when you're doing like a different shot where you're throwing things around. It might take 30 different takes until you finally get the shot like the way you want it. So yeah, that's basically it. That's very important. But now I would say let's get started with the actual shooting process. And now the plan for the first shot is that we're starting off right here so that the camera is blocked basically by this top plate here in the kitchen. And then I'm moving backwards and at the same time Alex is opening up the shelf here at the bottom and this should be sort of synchronous. And like I said, this might take a few different takes, but I would say let's get started. So I'll just place the Chemex here inside of the shelf and we'll try to put it into the center somewhat like this and now basically it's just a thing of us working together and like I said I'll switch over to the slow motion mode as you can see we are here inside of the 240 frames per second mode and then I like to frame the shot just as I like it then I will lock the focus and the exposure and now it's basically just a thing of us doing the thing synchronous so we will basically count down from three and then we will open it up. So let's do it. Three, two, one, go. Okay, so that was not good. So let's do that again. And three, two, one. And that's also one more thing that I forgot to mention. I have already planned the video in depth and I wanna end the first shot with a pan to the left so that I can start off the next shot also with a pan to the left so that we have one of these smooth seamless transitions. And like I said, the planning process is very, very important. And in case you would like to see my entire process and how I'm doing this, we have a full video inside of our full course smartphone filmmaking pro where I'm breaking this down in depth for this specific video. But now I would say let's do it a few more times until we get the shot how we want it. <clears throat> Three, two, one. I think that was pretty good. Let's check that. Three, 
Yeah, I think that's that was already pretty good, but let's do it just one more time. So let's do three, two, one. Yeah, I think we have it. Yeah, we got the first shot. All right, so we will now shoot the second shot and the goal is to make a seamless transition from the first shot. And as you remember, we ended the first shot with a pen to the left and we will do the same thing now where we start off the shot also with a pen from the left. And then the goal is that Alex is throwing the Chemex from one side to the other one and I want to have the Chemex sort of in the center of the frame. This will be a tricky one, so we might have to do that a few times. And before I press the record button, what I always like to do, I have mentioned that before and I'll probably mention that again, is I always like to lock my focus and my exposure, especially for these B-roll sequences. So as you can see, this is what it looks like without me changing the focus and the exposure. So I just long press on the screen and I bring down the overall exposure. And now we have a much more epic looking image and yeah, that just looks way better right now. And just one more thing that I have not mentioned yet is I am also using a clouds diffusion filter. And with this filter, we get this glowing effect here on this tube light. And this is not necessary. You do not have to have this, but I like to use these kinds of filters for some more cinematic looking images. But now I would say let's get started. So the goal is that we start off the movement right here. I'll pan from the left to the right and we need to count down again. And then we will sort of try to keep the same motion. And at the end, I will do a whip pan to the left one more time. So I would say let's try it out. So let's do three, two, one. Okay, let's do that one more time. Three, two, one. Okay, so we will do that a couple of times. Three, two, one. That was pretty good, I think. Let's check that. And that's what's really cool with shooting 240 frames per second, you get a really slow motion effect. Yeah, almost perfect, but let's do it a few more times. So it took us, I don't know, around about 15 takes to get to this result and it's still not perfect, but that's just how it is with these kinds of videos. And like we've done with the first shot, we also want to keep the same smooth seamless transition like we had with the first transition or with the transition from the first shot to the second one. So we will again start the next shot also with the whip pen from left to right. And the goal with the next shot is that Alex places down the Chemex onto the table. So yeah, like I said, I ended this clip again with the whip pen to the left. And now we will do sort of a pan from below the table and then sort of, it's pretty difficult to explain, but we will start below the table, try to be sort of synchronous in the movement and then place it down. So let's do it without filming. So I will start here. I will count three, two, one, like this. Let's try that. I'll again lock the focus and the exposure and let's do three, two, one. Three, two, one. Ooh, I think that was good. At the second take, that would be crazy. Yeah, second take, we got it. So the next shot is also probably going to be tricky because the goal for the next shot is that Alex is throwing the filter, not putting it in, but throwing it into the Chemex. That's one thing that's pretty difficult to do. We've tried that before and it's not the easiest thing. And at the same time, I also want to sort of follow the same movement like I did before. So basically I ended the last shot with whipping down and now I want to start sort of here in, you know, in, in the nothing, so to say. And then I want to go back and follow his movement when he's throwing it into the Chemex. 
This will be tricky, this will also take a couple of takes, but I would say we'll just give it a try. Could you please put the filter into this so that I can take my focus and the exposure. I'll again bring that down, something like this. And now we will do the same thing like before. So we'll do three, two, one. Oh man, I was too slow. <laughs> Once again, three, two, one. <laughs> what? Two times? So for the next shot, we need a few different tools that you probably do not see usually in some of these videos. And we need some plastic foil and some coffee powder. And I have already placed my phone down here on the table. And what I will do right now is I will try to focus to uh, the most closest distance that's possible. So I want to set my focus to as close as possible to get a nice blurry background. And you can do that basically by just putting something close to your phone. So that's pretty simple. And then make sure that you lock the focus and the exposure. So that's the first thing. I've already done that and I will now place my phone down. I'll hit the record button later and next up I want to, so the goal for this shot basically is we will want to take some coffee powder and just, you know, let it sort of rain onto the camera and get a cool effect. But of course I do not want to make my phone dirty, so that's why we're using the plastic foil. So the goal right now is I will just put that as close as possible above the lens. So I have now already started my recording. I'll put that as close as possible above my lens. And now Alex do the dripping. Okay, so we need to check how that looks. That's looking pretty good. I think we got a bit too much coffee powder at once at the beginning. It was looking nice, but then it was just a bit too much, I think. So maybe we'll do that just one more time and then we're good to go. And for the last two to three shots, we were basically doing some easy parallax movements. So basically I was again just using the slow motion mode and then we're putting in the coffee and also the water. And then I was just doing some, you know, some slow parallax movements. And that's basically it. That's the entire shooting process for this epic B-roll sequence. To be honest, it's not as hard as it might look like and it's not as difficult as it might look like. So basically you just need to practice this a few times and like I said the planning process is very very crucial for these kinds of videos. The better you do that the better the final outcome will be. In case you would like to see the full planning and editing process then you can check that out inside of our full smartphone filmmaking pro course. I will link that down below. And in case you have not seen the video where I'm showing you how you can shoot an epic interview using your iPhone then click this video over there. Bye bye.